There's more and more talk these days about becoming alkaline in our internal system and getting our body's pH. And there's more and more health professionals starting to agree how important that is. But as you saw earlier, I said that pH is not everything. It's not the deciding factor when it comes to a liquid or it comes to a water. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now with something called an oxidation reduction potential meter or for short ORP. Now this this meter was actually created for the beer and wine industry and what they do is they put this in the barrel and it shows an electrical charge and the beer and wine master can tell when the fermentation process has ended. Also the pool industry uses these because they put them in the water and it shows if the water is oxidizing enough to mold and bacteria which tells the pool guy if he's got enough chlorine in your water. We've also found that we can use them to measure ionized water. So liquids can only be one of two things. They can be positively charged or they can be negatively charged. Negative charge is the spark of life. Negative charge is what gives you the living electrical current for all your cells to thrive, for your energy system to work, for your immune system to work at its maximum capacity. Negative ORP is huge. It's everything. And this is why I said earlier that just because something is pH doesn't make it ideal for health. As we saw, our tap water was pH, but we know the tap water has chemicals and other contaminants in it. The bottled water is pH, but as we're going to see in a second, is it negatively charged, which means that it can have powerful antioxidant power in your body and donate electrons to cells? Now, I'm not trying to make chemistry students out of everybody here, and I'm certainly not a chemist myself, but I have the basic understanding to know that when something is positively charged, it steals electrons from a cell, and that makes the cell oxidize. And remember, we don't want to speed up oxidation in our body. It's already happening naturally. So for those of you who don't understand the word oxidation, when you cut an apple open and it turns brown, that's oxidation. It's, it's the process of degrading or degenerating or dissolving. Oxidation is when a metal turns to rust. That's oxidizing. So let's take a look and see what these waters measure on the oxidation scale. Here's some Fiji water. We'll take some, and I didn't want to skew the test by testing these colored liquids, so I'm pouring some fresh samples here. And some Donsani. I think we owe it to ourselves to test the Penta since the Penta calls itself uh, superior hydration patented process energizes the water. So let's see how energetic it is. And then the soda. Let's see how the soda measures. We're going to measure, of course, our chance in ionized water as well. So I'm going to put this out in front and center because that is the star of the show. And let's have a look at these. Now, with this meter, if you see a negative symbol like you see now, that means the water's negatively charged. If you don't see the negative symbol, that means it's positively charged. Well, let's take a look at the Fiji water. And we can see here that we're positively charged and we're climbing into the positive range. All right, let's test our Aquafina. That's about a 200 millivolt and it, not much different than the Fiji water. Now, isn't that interesting? The Fiji water is from a pristine place in Fiji. The Aquafina water is from Pepsi Cola's plant in the United States. Donsani will get just about the same results, about a 240. Now, again, for those of you who are into electronics and stuff, this is a millivolt reading. So we're reading millivolts right now. Here's our Penta water, the energized water. I hope we can all see this now. I'm not making this up. It's more oxidizing. Remember, positive charges, the higher oxidizing that it is, negative charges, the more of an antioxidant that it is. 
So when something's negatively charged, it can donate electrons to cells and help them rejuvenate and become as strong as possible. Here's our soda. Whoa! <laughs> you really want to drink this stuff, huh? 442, twice as oxidizing as any of the bottled waters. But I want special note that our alkaline bottled water was still oxidizing. All right, let's test our smart water out here. And let's not leave out our distilled water. And by the way, I use distilled water here as an example, but re reverse osmosis and distilled, pretty much identical as far as pH and, and ORP levels. So let's see where we're at here for the smart water. This is the water that people are drinking in the gym the people that are flooding their bodies with lactic acid. By the way, when you work out, do you know that you also create oxidation in your cells? That's why antioxidants are so important. So we see here that the smart water is positively charged and it's rising. It's really no different than the, the rest of these waters. It's about a positive 200 millivolts. And the distilled water. Looks like it's even more oxidizing than the smart water, about positive 220. And these meters, these are lab quality meters, so you can leave them sit here for an hour and the, the results will keep, if it's going up, it'll keep going up for an hour. So right, we're at 250 positive millivolts, very oxidizing. So let me, let, me not, let me not gloss over this, this is so important. They call this in the water industry, they call this pure water. They use the word pure. That's the number one word in the water industry. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, pure. And they talk about the cleanliness, how clean the water is. But I'll tell you this, find me a dog that lives in a backyard and give him a muddy puddle and a clean bowl of water, which one does he go to? He will never go to the clean bowl. He will always go to the muddy puddle. And why is that? Because a dog doesn't choose his water with his eyes. They choose it with their nose. And the nose tells them to look for nutrients and living material that can, nutri uh, that can give nutrients to the body and give sustenance. They know instinctually where to go. Us, it's got to look crystal clear or it's no good. Now you've just seen the results of this. This is pure water. There's nothing healthy about it. It's pure, we're not gonna argue that. It's crystal clear, it's clean. We can't argue, but we see that not only is it extremely acidic, but it's also very oxidizing. So this is definitely not a healthy product to drink. All right, now let's test the star of the show. You see that negative symbol? And it's about a negative 215, which is right where we recommend drinking the water. Now, isn't that amazing? And again, if anybody thinks I'm skewing this, you can get one of these meters and test it out at home yourself. Oxidation reduction potential. I call it the spark of life. When it comes to water, there's only two kinds of water. You have living water and you have dead water. Now, remember what we said earlier. Nature actually makes living water. So we're not doing something that nature doesn't do also. And nature makes the water through friction and ferocious movement and contact with rock elements and metallic elements. Creates that electrical charge. When that electrical charge is created in the water, the water changes completely. It's a living element. It has electrical energy to donate to your body. So. I would ask anyone that's watching this, how do you get electrical energy into your body? You need it, you have to have it. There's only two sources that I'm aware of, of that electrical energy. Well, uh, there's actually three, maybe there's four. But the first one would be through food. That's eating live foods, picking them off the vine, out of the ground, putting them into your mouth you will get the electrical living energy of that food. And we're actually gonna demonstrate that in a few minutes. You're gonna be amazed when you see this. The second way is to have a water ionizer that makes electrically charged water. 
The third way would be to take your finger and stick it inside an electrical socket. Now, we're definitely not recommending that you do the third method. We prefer the first and the second method. Matter of fact, the third method probably wouldn't work out too well for you at all. But you get the point. We need electrical energy. It's a huge part of what keeps us strong, vibrant, and healthy. And what is electrical energy? Is it a vitamin? Is it a mineral? Is it fiber? It's not part of any of that. It's a new category that we all need to be very aware of. The electrical energy of things is what makes things absorb into your body. So here's a great example for you. You take a piece of fruit off the vine. It's negatively charged off the vine that we're going to demonstrate here in a second. It's negatively charged. All the vitamins and minerals and everything in that fruit carry the negative charge and it it makes it able to absorb into your body. When the fruit is an hour old or picked an hour or two hours later, it's lost its negative charge already. So even though there's sustenance in there for you to survive, there's no energy, there's no spark of life. It is so important. And there's nothing that I've seen out there that can duplicate that living energy in water outside of nature than a water ionizer. So let's move on to our next segment and let's check out these fruits and vegetables and how ionized water changes them.